Don't worry about the price of eggs. We're answering the real question here. What is the best digital system to get for FPV in 2025? Letter, what do we got? Yeah, oh, got some. What's up in there? Oh, oh, that's good. Good chickens. G'day, Stu from UAV Futures here. Sorry to you omelet lovers out there, but today, no eggs, just the goods. We are looking at the new goggles and three from DJI versus the Walksnail goggle cell. And this is the big one. This is the head-to-head, -head, the shootout. So you can decide it's 2025, what is the best digital system to get? We're gonna go through everything, the price, the pros, the cons, the screen sizes, the comfort, the focus, if you wear glasses, the range, the penetration, the hertz, refresh rates, the menus, everything. If you have ever wondered about FPV, what system to get, and especially if you're into the budget entry options, this is what you need to see. To make this even more scientific, uh, Stickman Steve and myself, we're gonna be flying these back to back and we have two of the exact same crafts to test these on, what our impressions are like. The only difference between these two lightnings is this one has the latest generation of the O4 Lite and this one is using the walk snail. So these two crafts, exactly the same. The only thing that's changing is the goggles and you're gonna notice the difference. We're gonna be doing flights back to back. Steve, you're gonna try both of them yep. and to make it as fair as possible, we're using the same radio. We have the exact same quad, so we've both got Lightning okay. V2s. We're gonna go through everything so you can make the right decision, like the size, the range, the options, the frequencies, everything, so you can make the right decision and decide what is the best digital option to get in 2025 if you're just starting out. All right, ready to rock and roll? Yeah, Steve, you're gonna do the first pack. You're gonna fly around with the, we'll get some commentary on just a walk snow goggle yep. L flight, and then straight away, we're gonna throw these on, and you're gonna fly the exact same craft of the O4 system. Too easy. All right, let's do it. Alrighty, Steve, so you've flown this quite a lot. Uh, this is probably one of your most flown systems of 2024. But uh, just give me sort of a summary on what it's like flying this around, your screen size, all that sort of stuff, light leakage, comfort, your thoughts on this goggle yep. with this unit. Don't think I'll be able to wear these with glasses. Mm -hmm. they, I can feel them, the foam sort of on the edge of my eye sockets. A little bit of light leakage if I actually don't focus on the screen and look around. I'm not really that comfortable wearing them. In terms of the picture, yeah, it's great. It's um, for an entry level box goggle with walk snail. I think it's pretty damn good. Everything's yeah. super clear. Field of view is fine. Yeah, no blurriness. I can see the whole screen. All the edges are straight, which is good. Far away, I don't, I've never experienced eye strain with these. I don't know if I've got younger eyes than you. Yes. Do you notice any latency or anything like that when you're flying this? No, not at all. Same mm -hmm. as wearing, I've got the V1 avatar goggles. It just mm -hmm. feels locked in, I'm so used to it. One thing I do want to compare between the goggles L and the N3 is the range of penetration. Yep. So Oh, hey, Lab Coach Stu here. Because we're being so scientific and doing these tests, I want to quickly mention there is an antenna difference between these two. We've got patch antennas in the walk style. They're going to be great flying around in front of us. However, in the test that you see, we are flying around behind us, which means a system like the N3s that have some omnidirectionals, it's going to perform better generally all around us. So just keep that in mind. The difference might not be as great as it looks in this video. I'm just going to go around all the cars, duck down behind the house. And just keep an eye on my megabits per second. Yeah, let me know how it feels like if it starts to get blocky oh, or breaking up. Critical. Mate, I am literally at the back fence of your yard. Okay. Was, it's a little bit, little bit blocky, a little bit smeary. Yes. I think I got down to about 13 megabits per second, which is pretty rock solid actually for, for a little walk snail system with basic goggles. So yeah, coming through all this house, all the trees, all the sheds. That was actually pretty locked in. Didn't feel any stuttering to the point where I was worried about my flying. Yeah, I actually heard your ELRS receiver giving you a warning before the actual video. Yeah, and it's only a, a low signal. Oh, I got a little bit of stuttering then. Okay. And that was at ground level too. So coming through all this stuff here. Yep. Yeah, no, that's not bad at all. Um, in terms of comfort, yeah, I think they could be better. They, they are quite compact though. So for traveling and things, packing them away, awesome, super compact. Love the fact you can just plug any battery you want into it. Bring it in, and yep. the plan is I'm going to throw straight away. You're going to fly around with the N3 goggles. Too easy, man. Right, I'm you ready? coming in. Yep. All right. Where am I landing? Anywhere you like. Anywhere I like. Right on my lap. Oh, that's very scary doing that. All right, you save your DVR. All good. You might be asking yourself two questions. Stuart, why are you in a chicken coop? And number two, how can we support the channel a little bit more? Can't answer the first one, but as a bit of a bonus, we are opening up the UAV Futures members over on YouTube. So we're going to have some members only video. That link's going to be down there below. You're going to get some more out of FPV, and you're also going to support what we're doing here. And if you do become a member, I want to say thank you so much. You're an absolute legend. Radio Steve, same radio, yep. same drone, but with the DJI in there. And now we are using the 
EN3 goggles. So yep. a little bit more expensive. We've done the review of these, but uh, as a bit of a comparison, side-by-side -side shootout, take it away. Yeah, between right. the two systems, there is like $46 difference or yeah, something like wow, that. Okay. Uh, so straight off the bat, these goggles are much more comfortable. All right. Honestly, they actually wrap around my eyes a bit better. Um, in terms of field of view, I think the walk snail's probably got just a little bit of an edge on it. These ones, they kind of have like, for me, they have like a curved edge to the screen. Okay. If that makes sense. Seems to have a little bit of a curved edge vertically and horizontally. Like inside the actual goggle? Yeah, it's not so much. Whoa, well, bro, what have you done? Oh, thank you. Uh, <laughs> nothing, I don't know what you're talking about. Yeah, I want you to focus uh, less on crazy flying, more on the actual of, of this comparison between the <laughs> yeah. two, right? Yep, yep. So with these ones, I find that the field of view is, is quite comparative in terms of your focal points to the edge of the screen. Mm -hmm. I don't like how this one appears to me to have a curve in the screen. It's not the fisheye effect from the camera lens. Yes. It's the actual screen. Sort of a little bit off-putting, you know? All right, what about the field of view in terms of the lens from this one versus the, the walk snail? How, how's this field of view? Pretty much the same for me. All right. Honestly, it's not taking away or giving, you know, it's, it's the same, just as flyable. I love the image of walk snail. I'm very used to it. I think this has definitely got an edge on clarity and that's not so much to do with the screen of the goggles. They're both running 60 hertz. Pretty much the same, mate. It feels like I'm flying walk snail just with better goggles and a slightly crisper image. What about some penetration? Do you want to go for a flight up the back and see how you go as well? Yeah, right, eh? Yep. Okay, so I'll come down the side. I'm going to stick as low as I can as well. Around the cars. Oop, there's a trailer there. Okay. Just keeping an eye on my megabits per second. Yep. It's dropped to 19. So yeah, pretty much the same as the walk snail system, mate. Almost the same. And still just as flyable though, the whole the whole time just around here? Absolutely, yep, absolutely. In terms of the video, mate, yeah. Crystal clear the whole way. With the walk snail, I did get a little bit of smearing and blockiness. Yes. I'll just go for one more. Same spot. Yeah, no, this is smooth as butter. The, the megabits did drop comparatively to the 1S walks now, mm -hmm. but the, the picture was just rock solid. All right, and what about the comfort after you're sitting, sitting them on your face flying around? Way better. Yep. Yeah, 10 times better. And if you're wearing glasses, do you reckon you could wear glasses with these ones? You'd, you'd have much more chance with these. The, um, the walk snail goggles for me, if I was wearing them, I would not be able to have goggles at all. Glasses? Oh, sorry, glasses, yeah. They just would not fit in the walk snail goggles out. For my face, these ones, yeah, fine. They actually wrap around my face quite nicely. I do find these though, Stu, they get a bit warmer on the face. Okay, you're yeah. feeling the heat a little bit more? Just a little bit, yeah. Mate, flying them was absolute gold. That was really nice. The only thing I noticed, like if I just go like this, adjusting out, you can tell there is way less light leakage. Like okay. I feel like I'm coming out of a nightclub at 5 a.m. right now. <laughs> okay. It's good. But the only gripe I have with the actual screen on these is it, it feels curved. Okay. And the screen edges, are weird. I can see more of the, the screen corners being such a longer focal point on these goggles yep. than the um the goggles L. Straight up comparison, yeah, these these definitely got a right, I'm gonna let's go through some rapid fire questions. Which one had nicer screens to look at? Uh N3. Which one has a better field of view? To me they're the same. Okay, what about colours? So colours, just the N3. In terms of battery options, because I know we've spoken <laughs> about that. Cadex all day long. Okay, yeah. and I, what do you think about this solution of having it tied to your battery or your, your goggle? I think it's, it's a little bit silly, um, a little bit controlling the consumer a little bit. Mm -hmm. Being able to just plug one in as you go, you need a new one, sweet, whatever. It's, it's so much better. All right. Having the fixed battery option is obviously going to play havoc with you in the field when you run out of juice and you want to fly. Yes. But the way that these counterbalance the weight off the front of your head. Because I mean, look at the size difference. Right? Yeah, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's talk about that, okay. So yeah, comfort on your head. Comfort on the head, I think the battery, whether it's fixed or not with wiring is one thing, but the fact that it's on the back strap of your head helps to, to counterbalance the extra weight. Which one these... dug in more? 
wok snail for sure. Okay. Much smaller facial opening there. Mm. Less foam. These have got the little rubber flaps there. I think that's where I'm feeling the heat from, maybe. Yes. There's okay. not as much dissipation. All right. So you feel like these are warmer than those ones? Like wearing yep. like sweatier, yep. sweatier, right? Sweaty eyeballs? Yep. But much darker. So the image quality is better. Yeah. And I think, locking I think out. That's a lock. where the image quality came for from for me. Yep. Was the fact that there was no lie leakage. Okay. Latency between the two? Nah, whatever. Same. Felt, felt yep. similar. Yep. In terms of like range or penetration dropouts here for our day to day flying. Sorry, mate, you had a bit of solder on you. Did I? Yeah. <laughs> uh, range and dropouts, mate, everyday flying, absolutely fine. Is, um, compared to the Goggles L, which I just flew before, got to exactly the same spots in your yard. Yes. All the penetration was there, dropped to a similar frame rate. But the, the N3s held their image beautifully. All right, the, so you think the N3s win that one? Yep. Trying to wear glasses, which one do you think you're going to have a better N3. chance with? All right. For sure. Uh, menus, navigation. Yeah, so again, I'm super familiar with CADEX. I do find it a little bit more intuitive mm -hmm. than the, the DJI system. Yep. I haven't spent a lot of time doing it except for yesterday trying to get the recording things going. Yes, yes. And that's a pretty big one, right? Yes, yeah. Um, I think that's I, probably something you're going to get used to, though. Exactly right. It, it's not well. really a gripe. It's not a benefit or a hindrance. Yep. I think it's just a new system. Okay. Uh, refresh rates, it all felt the same? Yeah, yeah exactly the same. All right. And uh, probably the last, if there's two last things. What do you think? You've got to activate DJI. Is that a problem to you where you don't have to do that or you couldn't care less? Doesn't really, not a deal breaker? I don't think so. I mean, I'm, I'm not going to go out and break the rules flying anyway. Yep. So having something registered might be a benefit for me in terms of warranty. I think it's more of an issue if you've got more of your um, your Avada 2s and, and all that sort of stuff, you know, that actually have geofencing and things built okay. in. For what we do, no, I couldn't care less. All right. And then finally, I guess uh, both the boards, they're very similar to go into the craft. There's not really too much difference. Yep. Camera mounts are the 1S kit versus the uh, DJI. Yep, the DJI, DJI I have left a lot to be desired with that, a mm -hmm. lot. In terms of versatility, being able to put it into any little micro frame, it's just not that easy. All right. Um, so uh, Walksnail wins for you for Walksnail that one? Walksnail wins with that, in that respect. Also for the durability, from what I've seen. I mean, we installed one knowing a few dramas that people have had around the world so far with the 04 Lite. Yep. So gluing that camera cable on the back. Mm -hmm. like, come on guys, this is FPV, we rely on our video. Yes. You know, one little crash, you might be able to turtle mode out, but if you can't see, what's the point? Yep, yep. You know? uh -huh. So I think Walksnail, definitely, I've, I've had some massive stacks with Walksnail 1S kits and they've held up beautifully. Okay, all right, and finally for the price. price? So this is $334 when I looked at DIY FPV and mm -hmm. shopped around and found where I can get it. And the Walksnail is $288. Mm -hmm. Which one are you gonna get? For me, you, if, if I was coming you in come, now, this is this is the video right now. You're coming in. What's the best budget digital solution? This yep. is the cheapest Walksnail system with the cheapest camera, yep. and this is the cheapest DJI system with their latest generation as yep. well. So if what I are you going to get? If I was coming in now, I would go DJI. Okay. Honestly, I would go DJI. I'm very very grateful that I got the chance to to use both and know the differences. Hope it helps people. But I think what they're doing these days with their versatility and their boards, being able to put them into smaller crafts, having a, a cheaper entry level. So even if you're coming from something like analog and you've already lashed out on good analog system, mm -hmm. it's still not much of an outlay to get into digital. Yes. If you're fresh off the boat, I don't see why you would go analog. Yep. I think digital and DJI. Do you, do you think you're going to have the best FPV experience for an everyday pilot using the DJI and the N3s over the Walksnail system? I think the benefits of DJI outweigh the benefits of Walksnail in some respects, but I think the downfalls of the new 04 light camera aren't quite as good as the benefits from the walks that one s kit okay it's a tricky one it is it is tricky but you can only pick one so what are you picking i'm picking dj okay yep. too easy uh do you have any words for people who already own uh walks now do you need to upgrade on a bit no, of a, don't need to upgrade. on a bit of a on a bit of a final thought you might be watching this thinking oh i want that system or something yeah but you've got an avatar system I you've do. got heaps of moonlights and everything yep. like that do you feel FOMO uh, between these two with this no, or are you happy with what not. you've got? Definitely not. I think the biggest thing for me would be the onboard 4K recording yep. that you have out of Moonlight. Mm -hmm. DJI's got the edge on it. Yeah, okay, fine. But for me, I am more than happy with Walks now. I've never had an issue with it. Yep. I don't think it's worth the cost for me to change over eight or so quads. Yes. I really don't. Yes. Um, until something massive happens mm -hmm. or Walks now becomes obsolete or you have to upgrade goggles anyway. Yep then I'll jump over. Okay. But at the moment, more than happy with walks now. Too easy. And that's probably something too, like future proofing, mm. where these are like just released. Mm -hmm. Walksnail has rumors of a new system or mm. CADEX and VTXs, and it's unclear as mm. well. So coming in today, that is another plus, I guess, on DJI's side versus, yep. uh, versus that. And look, I'm still rocking the Avatar V1 goggles. Mm -hmm. No issues with them at all. Yep. Love them. The picture and everything's great. Coming into the hobby though, yeah, why not?
why not go, we get a cheaper option. You know, you've got cheaper DJI, cheaper walks now. It's so much more affordable. Okay. So, yeah. Two I'm in. three. All right. <laughs> and three and DJI it is. Yeah. See, because oh, we, we don't hate DJI. We're not just big walks now fans. Every single video, yeah. we fly the systems that we like. The one we want to give you the best information. Twenty twenty. It gives you the most options. Yes. Right? And twenty twenty four, that crushed it. That was an amazing kit to have. 100%. And you should have no regrets if you are flying around that. Like mm. Steve, you're fl still going to fly walks now, still enjoys it. Yep. This is if you are coming in today, brand new, nothing, no kit whatsoever, which is a good cheap entry option to get yep. in terms of digital. I think I, I agree with you here. Yeah. Do it. Now you DJI critics out there, me included, I have to say the goggles aren't perfect, but the results speak for themselves. Oh, I have a package turning up. Fantastic. I'll be back. Let's see what we get. He tried to sneak away, but I opened the gate before he could drive off. Brother. Too easy, brother. Take care. Sucks. That was just a package for my wife. All right, so now before you put on your tinfoil hats and get a little bit conspiracy, just remember that I have no allegiance to either of these companies. I want you to be able to make the best decision possible so you can fly around, have the best time. And I know I've been critical of DJI in the past, and this definitely is without some limitations. I mean, we have an annoying battery system on the back, and I feel like the weaker of the two air units is going to be the DJI system. It's very fragile. I don't like the camera mounts, but the actual experience of flying around this is what I go for, the N3 goggles in 2025. I think even though they're a little bit more money, about $50 between the two complete setups, these, they're just uh, a better all-round goggle. The screens look nicer, it fits better on your face. They are future-proofed a little bit more. These are a great goggle in 2024. The goggles L are still great, but uh, this is going to be my option. If I was jumping in, my fam family or friends wanted to know what to fly, uh, I would recommend the N3 goggles. However, I gotta say, if you're worried about FOMO, go watch this video up here about the N3s, because if you already got a digital system, you don't need to switch. Like that video will spell it out for you. If you want like a free drone, I actually have a spare. Here it is, this bad boy. So the lightnings we were flying in this, I've got an analog version one. Uh, I'm giving that away over on DIY FPV. Just, I'm gonna make a post about it. Just reply to it under the UAV future com futures comments. And if your reply is in there, well, I'll choose one of them. And yeah, you can have this analog version out there straight to you guys. So that's there. Subscribe for more FEV related content. Go watch this video because I picked it for you. Yeah, go on, go on, watch it, watch it. It's good. And uh, hit that subscribe, all that good stuff. See you next time.